Hi everyone and welcome along to Sony Academy with me Chris. In this tech tip I'm going to show you some of my favourite hidden features and tips and tricks within Logic Pro 10. Let's have a look inside. Okay, so in this first one, we're going to take a look at a thing called MIDI chase events. I have a long hell sustained note here, which is playing an arpeggiated uh, bass line within Anna. And I want to work on this section of bar three to five uh, on drums, but I'm, I need to hear the bass line. Currently, if I hit play, the, the bass line won't play because there's no MIDI on here at bar three. The MIDI on note is at bar one. So let me hit play. And I, I need to hear the bass line there. So we can either go in and chop up the note and have it re-triggering. Or we can do a thing called MIDI chase events. And that is a project settings. And we go to MIDI. Uh, so that means it's this is per project, per arrangement. Uh, if you want this to ha uh, be switched on at every time, it's not a preference. If you want this every time, you need to go into your auto load or your templates and switch it on and resave those. So switch on chase and click on the notes and now it's going to ch it's chase the event. So what that means is once I, once I hit play at bar three, it's going to go back, grab the MIDI note on and start playing the events. So there you go. It's starting to play uh, halfway through that uh, held note. Uh, it's really handy if you're doing long strings or really where I use it a lot is risers. If you're you know working on a riser and you're working on a particular sort of drum build up and you need the you need to hear what's happening underneath. You don't have to play the riser across the eight bars or the 16 bars that is happening. Uh, you can switch on MIDI chase events and it'll pick up uh, the MIDI and start playing from where you want it to play from. So I hope that's good. Uh, that's MIDI chase events. So one other kind of workflow hidden featurey thing uh, is probably a tool that doesn't get used a lot. And I'm so surprised uh, that producers don't use it more. Uh, if you're an Ableton user, you, it'll be kind of familiar with it, uh, to you. But this is kind of a way to make logic feel a little bit like Ableton. Uh, currently, if I want to chop this vocal, I can hit T to get our toolbox. Go down to scissor tool, click on that and then T to get our pointer tool and then delete. Or I've got set up here is a marquee tool on the command click tool set. So if I hit command, I get a secondary tool. It's really, really handy. And if I go down to here, select the marquee tool, highlight it and just backspace. That's it. We can grab, you know, sections of MIDI regions. So I can grab that and just copy it up and drop it. I can grab, you know, several bits of regions. So command, uh, let's say we want all that. Let me copy that up, you know, so it's really, really handy. Uh, if this is something that you really want to use, we can have it on as a preference. So we go to preference, go to general and down here we can have uh, the pointer tool in track provides marquee tool click zones and fade tool click zones. So kind of like now this only works on uh, audio regions, not on uh sorry it only works on midi regions not uh, audio regions if we hover halfway below the region you can see we now turn into the uh the marquee tool so i can go low here and just delete uh kind of like we have loop on here or we have stretch there so depending where we are in the region up is just pointer below is marquee tool so that's the marquee tool i advise you go get used to it uh you know it's really handy if i use command here and just want you know just want to nip out that bump done it's so handy uh, and it's very much feels like ableton uh, so there you go that's the marquee tool okay so another hidden feature i, I like to use is a uh, groove tracks i've got a drum uh load of drum beats going or drum drums the drum beats and they're all from you know some from lips some programmed all probably kind of different you know using a different groove template and i'd like to kind of gel it all uh, together a bit better and get it a bit tighter so uh we can set one track as the master groove and then all other tracks will look to it for their 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 sync uh for their 
quantization and we'll we'll shift things around so the the track that i want to be our master groove is this okay so what we do is uh, here we go to uh track header components we want to add a component in called groove track and nothing really changes except once you hover over you now get a star and star means that this will be your uh, master groove track so i'm going to star this one and now we get uh, ticks for every other track so nothing should have changed at the moment until we start uh, we go yeah we want this to be synced to the master groove track we don't need kick because it's four on the floor that and that and you can see that those they're readjusting their groove uh, once I click them on and everything now should sound uh, a little bit tighter uh, and, and working off this master groove track switch it all off it feels a bit looser So that's a way to actually you can import, uh, say, a drum loop or something you really love the groove off and you have some MIDI hats. You can then uh, regroove the, your MIDI hats to the, the, the groove that you've brought in uh, just by using the master groove on Logic Pro. So in this one, uh, it's going to be uh, all about locators. Uh, and normally we have, we switch on cycle and we can set it to wherever we want. We can move it, uh, we can move it, you know, redraw it here, move that. Uh, there is other options that some people don't know uh, about that are hidden. And if we right click on the Reese on the cycle, we can have auto set locators. So this can sometimes be very handy. So depending on where I click on what region, if I click there, it's going to automatically set the cycle points to that region or here or to this region or to this region. Uh, and if I reduce this region it reduces the cycle uh, another uh, aspect we talked earlier on about the marquee tool if i also i can draw a marquee tool and it'll set uh, the regions via the marquee tool and that again you can uh, switch off so it's just going to select the regions uh, by the marquee tool so we're no longer selecting via the region uh, We can have it by region. Now we're switched it back on. Or we can select uh, marquee selection or both or by note selection. So you can uh, customize your uh, cycle. Uh, I think sometimes it's really good to have region selection on and marquee tool selection uh, settings. So you can quickly just set your cycle. Uh, there you go. That's it. Uh, customizing your cycles in logic pro okay in this last tip we're going to show you how to uh, thicken a uh, kind of mono vocal uh, and add a little bit of detuning and widen it uh, in the background kind of fake uh, not harmonies but back in you know just trying to double track the the vocal to make it sound thicker we've got this very uh, standard sort of vocal uh, supplied by the wonderful film these feelings are coming in so we just want to duplicate and um, we're going to do two copies of this one two um, we're going to pan one left and one right and we're going to turn these two copies down a little bit um, these feelings are coming in so we can't really hear much difference at the moment so what i'm going to apply here is uh, some sort of pitch shifting so i'm going to do pitch shifter and uh, we're going to we don't want it up any semitones we're just going to detune down maybe you know 15 cents and up mix up 100 and again on this one i'm going to pitch shifter and semitone zero and we're going to go up and do the mix uh, and let's have a listen to this now see how it compares These feelings are coming in so yeah 
kind of interesting, nice. Uh, you can back off the width a little bit. These feelings are coming in ways. So it's thickened up slightly. And with this, what I'd probably try and do as well is uh, we'd maybe do some delay, push, you know, push this one by 48 ticks. And this one forward by you know 22 ticks just so we're not we're again we're slightly delaying these two vocals and let's have a listen these feelings are coming and let's push it even more and see where we're getting to these feelings are coming in with We could maybe even try a uh, sample delay, mono sample delay, and do this by ear. These feelings are coming in waves. These feelings are coming in waves. So you could do something like that, just to add. So we've gone from kind of these these feelings are coming in with these feelings are coming in ways so yeah you could do that and possibly then you know as a secondary thing vocal transformer uh, again we could try and maybe do uh these feelings are coming in waves. Yeah, so we can try and put a vocal transformer and what we're using it just to shift the formants. So again, some down and some up. Let's have a listen. These feelings are coming in waves. And then balance between, you want just a little hint of the low, uh, a bit more of the high. These feelings are coming in waves. So there you go. That's uh, using stock plugins in Logic to thicken up a vocal. Uh, guys, listen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks from me. Uh, see you all very, very soon. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.